Hey guys, my name is Dice Rowland. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the Master of Body Horror's earlier films. Shivers was written and directed by David Cronenberg and was released in Canada on October 10th, 1975. It tells the story of residents of an apartment building being invaded by parasites that cause their hosts to become sex crazed and want to infect as many other people as possible. This review was requested by Xpawn13. So without further ado, this is my review of shivers. The movie begins with something of a commercial for the Starliner apartment building. You know, showing off all the retro perks that each apartment provides. If friends have followed you home, you can press the convenient red alert button that will put the whole building on lockdown and drop your friends into a vat of acid. Essentially, this place is stacked with everything that anyone in the 70s would need. It's the perfect paradise. So naturally, something's going to go horribly wrong any second now. A young couple, played by Vlasta Verona and Sylvie Du Bois, arrive to potentially get an apartment here. Merrick, played by Ronald Mladzic, proceeds to take them on a tour of the Starliner. At the same time, there seems to be a bit of a scuffle going on in one of the apartments between Dr. Emil Hobbs, played by Fred Doderlein, and Annabelle, played by Kathy Graham. On a side note, I'm pretty sure that painting's in my house. This ends with Hobbs strangling Annabelle and performing an out-of-hospital surgery on her. I guess things didn't go so well because Hobbs slits his own throat. Which leads fellow Starliner dweller Nicholas Tudor, played by Alan Coleman, to find the scene when he arrives to visit Annabelle. Nick's wife Janine, played by Susan Petrie, visits her friend Betts, played by Barbara Steele. Janine is rather concerned about Nick as he hasn't been acting like himself and seems to be having pain in his stomach. With some instigation from Betts, Janine decides to call the doctor so he can have a look at Nick. And speaking of said doctor, we're introduced to the resident doctor, Roger St. Luke, played by Paul Hampton, who discovered the grisly murder-suicide and called the police. Hobbs had called him to meet him in the apartment, according to St. Luke. He then meets with Hobbs' partner, Rolo Linsky, played by Joe Silver, to find out what Hobbs might have been doing. According to Linsky, he and Hobbs had been working on a project that would be an alternative to organ transplant. We got a guy with a bad kid. Right? Now you put the bug in him. The bug goes to work on the kidney, dissolves it, though the body assimilates it. Now what do you got? You got a perfectly good parasite where you used to have a rotten kidney. Nick picked a bad day to go to work as it seems he's got a little bit more than stomach cramps going on. So he returns to his apartment and promptly has a convulsion and vomits blood. Or rather, blood and a slithery thing. Poor birdie. Hey, I got news for you, Ethel. That wasn't Tweety. Also, I don't think that's quite the right response to some unknown bloody thing falling from the sky. St. Luke and his nurse Forsyth, played by Lynn Lowry, are busy caring for residents who've come in for various things. Here, we have one such resident complaining of stomach issues similar to Nick's. Now you just take your shirt off and the doctor will be in to see you in a minute, okay? You don't have to go. I'm not shy. Hugh Hefner, is that you? St. Luke theorizes that Brad may have gotten an STD from, guess who, Annabelle. And technically, he's not entirely incorrect. Speaking of, one of Nick's ex-parasites finds a new host in a woman doing some laundry. Janine returns home to find Nick passed out in front of the fridge, bloody and in a rather poor state. Doesn't exactly relieve any worries she had about her husband, now does it? I'm sure she wouldn't be feeling much better about the situation if she was aware of the fact that Nick is now conversing with the parasites residing in his abdomen either. Doesn't that seem like the logical thing to do? Hey man, I've got this big cyst. Well, have you tried talking to it? You know, like, sit down and ask it how it's feeling. St. Luke decides to do a bit of investigative work on the connection between the Starliner residents and this project that Hobbs and Linsky had going on. Linsky has also been doing some digging as he tells St. Luke. Turns out, Hobbs had lied about the intentions of the parasite. It actually functions as an aphrodisiac slash venereal disease that, in Hobbs' own words, would turn the world into one beautiful, mindless orgy. And the reason why Hobbs murdered Annabelle is because she was essentially patient zero. Thus, he was trying to kill the parasite. St. Luke, rightfully so, suspects that there are a handful of guys in Starliner that have the same parasite. So, he invites Linsky to meet him in the apartment of Nick and Janine when he goes to have a look at Nick. Linsky does warn St. Luke to be cautious when dealing with the parasites, because they work fast. And he's not kidding, as it seems that Betts has a bath time visitor. <laughs> And 
and everyone without a dick collectively crosses their legs. Elsewhere in the apartment, the 70s version of DoorDash runs into a bit of a problem. This unfortunate waiter isn't the only one dealing with extremely grabby residents, as Forsyth ends up stabbing Cressimer to get away. She returns to St. Luke telling him of the incident, and he goes to her apartment to investigate. While he finds signs of the struggle and even a parasite, Cressimer is gone. It's a damn good thing the doctor doesn't carry a Glock in his minibag. Next we get a moment of the geriatric versus the parasitic. <laughs> Kind of pathetic, really. But in the long run, the parasite's still winning. St. Luke and Forsyth run into the elderly couple, and Forsyth accompanies them back to their apartment so that she can treat the woman's burns. St. Luke goes to the basement because that's where the old man dumped the parasite that he beat to a pulp. However, he's jumped by an infected worker and not in a good way. The doctor manages to defend himself, at least. Nick attempts to make Janine have sex with him in order to pass on the parasite. But, upon seeing Nick cough one up, she goes to Betts for safety. Given that Betts is also infected, she manages to pass the parasite on to Janine. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of parasitic passing on going on in the Starliner right now. Suspecting that there is something seriously wrong, Forsyth leaves the elderly couple's apartment in search of St. Luke. And just in time too, as it seems that those who are infected are now going door to door. <laughs> They're almost as persistent and aggressive as Jehovah's Witnesses. Forsyth determines that the best course of action, after finding the guy St. Luke bashed, is to steal a car and drive to help. The flaw in this plan is someone fucked with the garage doors, to ensure they wouldn't open. And she is once again attacked by a parasitic host. I have to say, St. Luke doesn't fuck around with these infected people. The good doctor attempts to drive the car through the garage door, but another resident crashes into them first. Now trapped and surrounded by sex-obsessed people, St. Luke takes Forsyth to the safety of the basement to wait for the police. But he's got one more problem on his hands. Roger, I had a very disturbing dream last night. In this dream, I found myself making love to a strange man. He tells me that even old flesh is erotic flesh. That disease is the love of two alien kinds of creatures for each other. What? And again, St. Luke don't fuck around with these damn slugs. And speaking of problems, Linsky has arrived in time to walk right into a big one. <laughs> Nick not only prevents Linsky from trying to remove the parasites, but beats the fuck out of him. Unfortunately for all of St. Luke's badassery, it really can't help him much when pretty much the entirety of the building is infected. He does get some form of revenge for Linsky though by shooting Nick. So essentially, Cronenberg said, KINKS. All of them. St. Luke, even more alone than before, attempts to evade the numerous horny residents, which becomes increasingly difficult. Until he's finally surrounded in the pool where Forsyth successfully passes the parasite on to him. There's really no way to make that sound any better. Sometime later, all of the remaining residents leave the apartment building out to the rest of Montreal to continue the spread of the parasite. And with that, the credits roll. Now let's dive into this piece. The plot of Shivers has a few different layers to it. It's a social commentary on the sexual revolution of the 70s, for one. Mr. Cronenberg has stated that the parasite is actually the protagonist in his eyes. Because of course it is. But if you watch the movie with this perspective, it puts a different twist on the events that unfold. And thus, it means there's a happy ending. It also seems like there's not much happening in the first half of the movie. But there actually is. We're watching the gradual and rather realistic evolution of a mass infection in close quarters. Kinda has a different feeling to it now, doesn't it? It could also be seen as zombie-esque, but without the flesh slash brain-eating and total mindlessness. Paul Hampton portrayed both a clinical and likable doctor, as well as a pretty badass guy. Barbara Steele and Lynn Lowry are ethereal and lovely in their roles. Susan Petrie did rather well in being the deeply concerned and distraught wife. Alan Coleman made being an emotionally cut off person, and a guy going through being infected believable. The acting job of everyone is pretty good here. The primary actors do well in their roles, and when needed, make the switch to sex-obsessed parasite hosts work well. 
there may have been a side or background character that made me chuckle a bit, but still, no one really messed up. Now, I can't say that I remember a majority of the scoring a whole lot, but that doesn't mean it isn't good. Composed primarily by Fred Mullen, none of the music felt out of place at all. It all flowed together to set the mood for each scene nicely. It was tension-filled or pleasant and comfortable when the story called for it. As far as atmosphere is concerned, the vibe of a suburban apartment building is nailed. There's a fanciness to it as well as a grungy feel to it sometimes. It goes from this comfortable and pristine lifestyle aesthetic to a dream or nightmare quality over time. The effects, being all practical, look pretty damn good. Granted, the blood can be rather paint-like at times, but the parasites look convincing enough to serve their purpose. Not to mention the times in which we see them moving around underneath someone's skin. With all that being said, I'm giving Shivers 7 out of 10 bloody thumbs up. In the category of body horror, this is a solid entry. And since this is an earlier film in David Cronenberg's filmography, it's pretty impressive. It's a creative plot with good execution that makes the viewer analyze it while simultaneously being skeeved out. It's a smart movie vaguely disguised as gross-out horror. It may not necessarily be quite my taste in horror, but I still found it to be engaging and interesting. It serves as a great start for Cronenberg's descent into body horror. I would recommend Shivers to those who love some good infection movies, as well as body horror, people who enjoy slithery creatures, and people who like to have their horror movies with a little kink thrown in. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like to let me know. Don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me what you thought of this movie, and if you have any suggestions for horror movies you would like to see me review in the future. You can support the channel through my Patreon where you would also get early access to videos like this. Also don't forget to share this video to help the channel grow and subscribe for more videos like this. See you later. There is still no confirmation by Montreal City Police concerning alleged reports of a citywide wave of violent sexual assaults.